Rick was a little bit longer than we thought, but I'm sure you guys got a little chance to mingle. I'm really excited to announce the next guest. His name is Sean Lee, and he has a YouTube channel called One Minute a Day, where he does one minute clips, so you can subscribe to him on YouTube. But he also makes $1,000 a day online uh, with videos uh, without taking his clothes off. <laughs> so Sean, come on up. All right, it's so great to be here. It's so awesome to follow that first talk by Neon. I'm here to tell you, forget everything he said and focus on the money. Make those stacks. Make $1,000 a day. No, I'm totally kidding. I agree with like everything that he said, so I'm gonna reiterate a lot of stuff. And I'm glad that he set the tone about finding your purpose and finding your passion because I'm just gonna blow over that stuff and talk about the actual tools, how I build the team, and how I found the right tools that allow me to live my purpose, live my passion, and make a lot of money while I do it. So my name is Sean Lee, and I'm a digital nomad. That's me with everything that I own. That's how I travel around the world, two backpacks and a road bike that travels with me. Can you see that already? Oh, the colors on. I'm better looking than that. <laughs> but that's how I travel. To me, being a digital nomad is about being mobile and you know, having freedom of time, freedom of money, and freedom of location and we already know why Chiang Mai is great for all of those things. And yeah, so I'm gonna to talk to you about how I started that lifestyle about a year and a half ago. Why am I passionate about video? Well, I've always been a video nerd. Like I was into video editing when I was a teenager. I made the sports highlight videos in high school. I've always loved cameras and video. So I'm not here saying that everyone needs to start a YouTube channel and you should all start making money from videos. But some of you, Maybe that will be right. Maybe you are passionate about video. You like being in front of the camera, or you like being behind the camera, or you just like making movies and telling stories. If that's you, then this talk is really gonna be tailored for you. But why else video is, I think video is one of the best ways to make a passive income in 2015. We know eBooks are great, audio books are great, but video is just that extra level stimulating and engaging, in my opinion. And video is seen as a premium product. People will pay more for a video than they will for an ebook or an audiobook, and it's all about that money. But seriously, if you're into video, then this talk will be for you. Does anyone here like making videos? Does anyone have a YouTube channel? All right, great, so I'm talking to a lot of people. Even if you don't, I think a lot of these principles are broad enough that will apply to whatever business you're into or whatever your passion is. The main message I have for you today is, you can do it, you can do it. I'm not special, I didn't do any secret thing. Maybe I have a little head start on you, but basically I'm following Neon's formula, the T-T-T-T-T-R formula. And so I'm gonna share with you how I implement that, how I implement the four hour work week. This talk is not about how to make videos. I'm not gonna recommend any cameras or editing software. It's also not about how to come up with your idea. You know, Nian had a whole talk about that. I could talk at length about that. You have to come up with your idea first. That's a prerequisite, your purpose, your passion. This talk is about how to take that idea and turn it into a business. How to build the team and build the website, find the tools that will allow you to live that life of freedom. You know, the four hour work week, making money, doing your passion. That's what this talk is about. How to turn that idea into a business. That's what I struggled with for years. I had the idea, but I didn't know how to make it into a business. I will also say that I have some required reading for you. This is homework. You have to read these books, Rework by Jason Fried and The Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Anyone read one or both of these books already? All right, awesome, awesome. I did actually graduate with a Bachelor of Science in Business. I studied finance and entrepreneurship, but these two books were total game changers. Changed the way I think about business. I think this is better than a four-year degree in business, in my opinion. All of my business uh, decisions are based on these two books, basically. So now, I don't know how this is gonna work, but I wanna show a video clip. There's no audio, so I'm gonna hold the mic up to my computer to show you how my business works, how I actually make my money. If the audio isn't good, we'll have to uh, move on without it, but let's see if this video is gonna work. This is how I make my money.
Hey, it's Sean Lee here, back with another episode of One Minute Day. I'm gonna tell you how I made $25,000 last month. I have another YouTube channel that I've built up mostly over the last two years that now has 200,000 subscribers and gets between one and two million views per month. Now, our YouTube viewers get all of our free content, but if they want more, they come over to our website and they pay a small subscription fee to get two or three times more content that's only available to members on our website. Our current subscription fee is $60 per year. We had about 400 signups last month. It's about $25,000 came in to the business. I didn't film any of those videos. I didn't edit any of those videos. I didn't even upload any of those videos. But what I did do is working with other really smart, talented people, we've created a system to make sure that that all gets done. Remember, McDonald's is not rich because they make the best burger in the world. Any self-respecting vegan can whip up a better veggie burger in about 15 minutes. McDonald's is rich because they've created the best system for delivering a burger the fastest, cheapest, most consistent way possible. So if your goal is to create passive income, you want to think about creating a system that's not dependent on you yourself, but that still creates a consistent, enjoyable, valuable user experience. That's my tip for you, and that's how my business brought in $25,000 last month. All right. All right. Thank you, Sean. That was great. Give him a round of applause. Right. So that video is a little dated. Now, actually, I'm proud to say we have 240,000 subscribers and over 500 signups a month, over $30,000 coming into the business. Very lean business. And you also notice it's a freemium model. So we have some videos for free on YouTube. If you want all the content, you pay a little fee and you get access to all the content. So I want to talk to you about how you can make a website and build a team that will do that. You can do, you can achieve that same result. And that's what I'm going to go over today. It might be a little too detailed for some people. It might be too, you know, introductory for others, but I'm hoping it's going to connect with some people here that are going to see the potential and be able to start taking action today. But first, I want to show you a little bit about my history. It's a little bit personal, but this is literally my net worth tracked over the last five years or so. See those big red bars? That is the crippling feeling of student loans. Student loans, credit card debt, very negative net worth. That's what most people in my generation have, very negative net worth when they get out of college. And you see the trajectory changes in late 2012. You know what Neon was talking about, the exponential growth. And you might think, oh, that must be when you started HD Piano, right? Well, you'd be right and you'd be wrong, because actually HD Piano started in 2008. I came up with this brilliant idea to teach piano lessons online. I made the first prototype lessons. I got over a million YouTube views very quickly, but I didn't know how to make it into a business. I didn't know how to build a team and generate profit. That's what happened in 2012, by reading Rework, reading the four-hour work week, and implementing these tools that I'm gonna to talk to you about. That's how I came from having an idea to having a business, and that's what I hope I can share with you today. The first thing, and Neon mentioned this, is build a team. You have to build a team. That was one of the biggest lessons I learned from the four-hour work week when he says, you don't want to run your own business. That's what I thought I wanted. I wanted to run my own business. You want to own your own business. There's a big difference. In 2008, I was proud that I did everything. I recorded the lessons. I edited them. I uploaded them. I built the website. I was a renaissance man. I could do it all. I was so proud, but all I had was a glorified job. That's all I really had at the end of the day. So if you're doing it all, you don't have a business, you have a job. So how did I go about hiring people? First was understanding when to hire people. Can you see that that's a bottle? All right. You want to look for bottlenecks. You want to look for bottlenecks. Things that slow you down, that frustrate you, that you don't look forward to doing. Things that create friction. With HD Piano, for me, that was the video editing. I would record all these lessons and then I'd have this pile of editing work to do. It was just redundant and mundane, and I dreaded it so much that I wouldn't record new videos because I didn't want to have to edit them. And that's what totally blocked me. And then when I found a video editor who would edit my videos for eight bucks a piece, for $32, I got four hours of my time and energy back. $32, I got four hours of my precious time back. It was precious. I was working a full-time job. I needed that time. That Eliminating that bottleneck was the best, greatest feeling in the world. When you take that first step and you get your first team member on board, I hope you can feel that feeling. The next bottleneck was with the instructions. You know, I'm not even that good at piano. So I needed to find an instructor who could play more songs than me and who could teach them better than me. 
So I found an instructor who could do that. Once I had the instructor recording the lessons and the editor editing them, the three of us took the company from zero a month to 10,000 a month within a year. It was, it was the greatest feeling. Just three people, two other talented people on board. Uh, exponential growth once I got out of the way and cloned myself out of the business. So that's when to hire. You know, do what you love doing and then outsource the rest. So how to actually hire people? I see a lot of people make this mistake is they have this idea and then they know they need help and they just go into panic mode. They ask all their friends, oh, I need help. Can you help me? Uh, I need someone to help me. But they don't articulate exactly what they need. So the first step is to define the exchange. What do you need from someone else specifically? Hopefully a step-by-step -step process. And what are you willing to give in return? Are you going to pay them hourly, pay them per video? Or as Neon mentioned, are you going to partner with them? Or the option I used in the beginning was using uh, sales commissions because the company didn't have cash flow. But I offered the instructor commissions on future sales if you can convince someone that your business has value. Obviously, the instructor I did, or the uh, video editor, I just paid out of pocket, eight bucks a piece. That was easy to do. So you got to think about what you need in return. What is the actual work that you need done, and what are you willing to offer in exchange for that? And I feel like once you do that, once you have a sheet of paper or a simple document, the job description, then it's easy to find talented people. I use Elance over and over. Who uses Elance or Odesk? All right, several of you. Yeah, I mean, there's just tens of thousands of freelancers out there, designers, developers, lawyers, accountants, whatever you would need. As soon as you can articulate what you need, you can find talented people on there. Fiverr is a great new budget site. Five or 10 bucks, you can get simple things done, logos, video animations, uh, voiceovers, I highly recommend Fiverr, or just old school, use your social network, friends or friends of friends to uh, fill that job. That's how I found my first instructors, a friend of a friend. I will say though that Elance and Fiverr make it really easy, right? If you don't want to spend a lot of time doing this, you want to make it easy. And Elance and Fiverr make it so easy. You pay online with a credit card, it creates a little workroom for you, you set deadlines, you send messages. This is like the easiest way, I think, to start hiring people. I use Elance over and over. I love it. So I know that's really like high level. Hopefully I was useful to some people. That's how I build my team. You know, define where the bottlenecks are. What do you need someone to do? What are you willing to give them in return? And then I think finding them is the easy part. Next, you need a website. You definitely need a website, in my opinion. If you want to make an online passive income, you have to have a way for people to pay you online. A lot of people say, I can't make money online, but they don't have a pay now button anywhere on their website. How do you expect to make money if you don't have a button for people to pay you? So these are the four basic steps that I use to create um, both of my cash cows right now. HD Piano, I built using these same four steps. And last month I made a new website. It took me two days to make the website, spent a few hundred dollars, made 5,000 in the first week. I mean, this is simple stuff. Doesn't take a lot of time, minimal investment. So here's what I do. This might be just review for some of you. But WordPress, who has a WordPress website? Look at that, all right. So I'm preaching to the choir here. WordPress is like the simplest, easiest way to get a website up and running. You already know this. And you don't need to know how to code or program. If you can update your Facebook profile, you can manage a WordPress site. The one thing I will add though, is you want WordPress specific hosting. I use a company called WP Engine, but there are others that you can use. The reason I recommend WordPress specific hosting is you get other automatic stuff like automatic updates, automatic backups, automatic security patches, even less stuff that you have to worry about as the business owner. Stuff that happens automatically and you don't need to hire someone or anything. This is the tools part of my talk, right? So get a WordPress specific host. You can do that in an hour or two. Next step is you got to choose a theme. What's great about WordPress is you can change the look and feel and functionality with just a couple of clicks. You can do that by installing a theme. Now there's a lot of free themes out there, as you know, I highly recommend using a premium theme. I don't have an affiliate with any of these people. This is just what I really use. I use Woo Themes and Theme Forest. So maybe you want your site to be like a video browsing website, like a YouTube clone, or maybe you want like a Facebook clone, a social media site or Instagram clone. You can find it on these sites. I've never paid more than 100, 150 bucks maybe. You get a premium WordPress theme, all this functionality out of the box to match whatever kind of site you're trying to create. So I use WooThemes and ThemeForest to get a premium WordPress theme. 
And finally, to set up your store, you need to have an e-commerce uh, way to get paid. This is what I use for HD Piano. I use WooCommerce. It's free. It's one of the most widely used e-commerce plugins for WordPress. You install it with a few clicks. You enter in your PayPal email address. Then you're accepting payments with credit cards and PayPal. It takes a few minutes to set up. It couldn't be easier. So WooCommerce is free. You can sell digital products, physical products. The other little add-ons that I use is WooCommerce subscriptions. This is how you can do recurring weekly or monthly or annual billing. This is how I do HD Piano, annual subscriptions. It's called WooCommerce subscriptions. The other one I've used is called Sensei. This is also by the Woo themed company. Sensei is the Japanese word for teacher. And so this is a plugin that allows you to do like online courses, step-by-step -step lessons with quizzes that are automatically graded awesome video courses using Sensei. So that's it. Again, all these you can install in just a couple of hours. WooCommerce, WooCommerce subscriptions, and Sensei. And finally, if you do go the video route, you need a place to upload your videos. You can't just put them on YouTube where people will share it for free and you won't be selling any, uh, making any sales. I use Vimeo Pro for a few reasons. It's 199 bucks a year, but you get premium HD video hosting. 24-7 uptime, works on mobile devices, tablets, computers. You don't have to worry about it. Vimeo, they call themselves the world's best video player. And the other great thing is you can make it so your videos only play back on your website. So people don't have the link to it, they can't download it, they can't embed it anywhere else. It's a great way to minimize piracy. You can't get rid of it, but Vimeo Pro is great for minimizing piracy. All right, who's ready to start a website? All right. Well, even if you can't see yourself owning it, if you're not savvy enough to do it, at least now you know what you need to hire someone to do. You could write that job description now. I need someone to set up a WordPress website on WP Engine, install this premium theme. At least now, hopefully, you have some clarity about what you need to do. So will you turn your idea into a business? Will you do a video-based website? Again, that comes down to you, what your passions are, what your purpose is, and if it fits you, but hopefully that was a high enough level overview to get you started, get you thinking, and uh, hopefully I can answer some more of your specific questions now. If you do want to follow my journey, I am on YouTube. Uh, my channel is called One Min A Day. I make like a short video every day, talk about four hour work week, talk about global travel, uh, all kinds of stuff. Short videos every day, or if you want to send me a message, you can go to oneminuteaday.com. I do see most of those messages. There is a contact form there. And the final point I want to make is Chiang Mai is the greatest place for digital nomads. I do come here twice a year. I come here in January and February. I also come back in the summer. So if you're here in June, I'll be here June 1st to the 21st. It's called the Raw Till 4 Thai Festival. There's meetups every single day about building your social media, uh, cycling, running, yoga, all kinds of fun stuff. So if you're going to be here in June, join that Facebook group and you know we'll hang out there. So I think we have some time for some questions. So any questions? Questions? <laughs> Stand up, please. What did you do for marketing? What did you do for marketing? Yeah, marketing is a, is a tough one. I'm kind of blessed uh, because I've basically not paid for any marketing. What I did is I grew the company organically just through YouTube, the freemium model. So uh, building up the YouTube channel, so you're getting a certain number of subscribers and views, and then they click the link in your description, they go to your site. Uh, I know you're probably thinking, uh, well, I don't have 240,000 YouTube subscribers. What can I do? Well, the point is neither did HD Piano. You know, flatline, nothing for so long, and then this was just a year and a half, two years ago. That's when we started uploading two to three videos a week. Two to three videos a week that you're like proud of, excited to share. And it's going to take time, but if you're a video guy and you love making videos, you'll persist. You'll go through with it even when you're not getting the views at first. You know, it was, uh, it was a gradual curve. It, was, it became exponential, but that's what we did. Two, three videos a week that we were really proud of, proud to share. And that's what I did, that's what I did for marketing. I'm not like an SEO or AdWords expert. I've only dabbled in that. I believe in just totally organic. If one of you guys want to tell me how I can do even better, I'd be happy to talk during the break, but it's all organic. 
Yes, the other question. Do you use wishlist Denver or S2, or you're able to do everything on your through Yeah. Is this working anymore? Can you hear me? Battery's dead. All right, all right. No, I, I don't use S2 member. I've looked at that. That's another alternative to WooCommerce subscriptions. I use just WooCommerce subscriptions. It handles all the membership stuff, all the automatic billing with PayPal. Yeah, WooCommerce plus WooCommerce subscriptions. I don't have to worry about it. It's really great. How do you deal with the uh, copyright of the, the songs that you teach? Do you, do you pay for like? Yeah, that's a. The question is about how do I deal with copyright? And the truth is, I got started before I even figured that out. You know, I just got started. I had my picture of what the perfect piano lesson would look like, and I just got started. I didn't know what I was doing. But eventually, you show up on people's radar, and you have to figure out the licensing. So there's three major licensing groups I have to go through, BMI, ASCAP, CSAC. I have to pay a percentage of my revenue as licensing. But I wouldn't. All right, so I do pay licensing fees, and um, it's marginal, and I didn't know what I was doing in the beginning. I just got started, so don't let that discourage you. It'd be great if you started a business where you didn't have to pay licensing fees, uh, but if you do, then I think you can kind of deal with it. It's not like a, a deal breaker. It's not like being double taxed or something. I mean, it's like single-digit percentages we pay in music licensing fees. Uh, one last question. What is the difference between your premium content and your free content? The difference between the premium content and the free content is that there's more of it. We teach a song in different parts. There's one lesson for the intro, another lesson for the chorus, maybe four videos for the song. Only part one is available on YouTube. So they can learn the first part for free. They want to learn the whole song. They subscribe. They get all of our videos. It's basic freemium model. We get first part for free, lock them in. Maybe one more question? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, all of these little spikes in growth happened when we increased uh, our volume. You know, in the beginning, we're uploading. Uh, one video a week, then we go to two videos a week, and then three videos a week, and it kind of balances out. But yeah, it does look like we've normalized a little bit. We will step up to four videos a week and see how that shifts things. But yeah, eventually we will hit more saturation. Um, but we're doing other things too, like collaborations with other channels, and maybe we will get into more paid advertising. But yeah, you can see the difference in organic growth. Very clear when you go from one video a week, two videos a week, three, and then hopefully four. Um, but that's how we've We've grown. Awesome, guys. Uh, I ha highly, highly encourage you to check out at least the free HD piano on YouTube. It's kind of like playing rock band, if you guys ever played that, or Guitar Hero, uh, but with the piano. And uh, I think that next time I have a piano, I will actually sign up for that and check it out. It looks fun. Maybe I can get you a coupon code. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much, Sean, for coming. Yep. Thank you. Uh,